you want to get started in fly fishing but you do not know where to start, today we're talking about the gear that I purchased, the gear that I wish I had gotten earlier on, and a whole lot more. All right, we're gonna go through items kind of smaller to bigger just because it's gonna be easier to talk about that type of stuff. So um, I always suggest a good pair of sunglasses in the river. I think that'd be kind of first thing on the list. Obviously, we're gonna to get to the rod and stuff, but you definitely need to be able to see the fish in order to catch the fish. So um, I've got a pair here of the sun skis. I bought these at REI. Uh, they're really nice, like mid-range. They're, they're like a nice, like plasticky, type of uh, situation and they, they're really kind of hard to like mess up. So that's great. Um, they cling onto your shirt really nice. They've got like a nice little curved bow type of situation here for the arms. When I kind of mean business and stuff and I'm, I'm really like, I'm not leaving the river without a fish type of day, um, I'll most likely use these Oakleys. Uh, they do come with like a little side shade. Sometimes I clip them on, sometimes I don't, but they, they are like complete darkness in there. So if you forget a hat, um, these are super awesome they help you see really deep i got the prism lenses on them so they are a little bit pricier but they're definitely worth it because they are like nearly indestructible they also come with this like mechanism for a custom little like metal string to keep around your neck so you don't lose glasses because i've lost ray-bans in the river way too many times i'll link all of the items that i'm listing out today in the description below for you guys to go check out on my amazon storefront so definitely check them out there um, another thing that i would say which is gonna kind of go hand in hand with those sunglasses is a good hat um, usually what i'll do is i'll get like a good hat at the beginning of the season but there's kind of a couple things that i look for i look for very breathable because a lot of times you guys have seen my videos i've got a gopro on my forehead i just i'm not looking to like sweat my face off on the river so something that's breathable something that's lightweight and something that i don't mind kind of dirtying up one of the hats that i found recently uh, that works so so well for this is the backcountry skins hat um, i think i talked about it in an earlier video but it's got a nice like it's got a nice breathable fabric i just love wearing it because it doesn't stain and i can wear it even on like the hottest hottest days i'll sweat so much um, and there's not a single stain on it. So it's a super great hat. I'd suggest checking it out. Uh, I'll link that below as well. All right, next, we're kind of on to a good fly rod. So I recently started using the Reddington Vice uh, combo, which actually comes with an ID reel. At first, I was trying to do everything that I possibly could do in the river with the cheapest possible combo, and there were limitations to that. Um, I kind of had to keep going back to the store asking about warranties and stuff with certain uh, reels and rods and stuff because they would just break. Like I would grab one the wrong way or get stuck in a tree and I try to wiggle it loose, snap a, uh, one of my eyelets or um, I had a reel that the clicking mechanism and it stopped working and then the drag stopped working. So I bought like three or four more and then I realized I could probably just buy like a nice combo, a good setup that's gonna last me, um, and I have not gone back. The second that I started using this thing, I realized that there's a huge difference in getting a really nice reel and rod combo. That's not gonna obviously break the bank. Like Reddington has these combos that are like 100 bucks to 300 bucks, and like in that range, you can get something really, really nice. Uh, once you start going outside that, then it starts becoming preference and kind of combos that you want to mix and match and get together. Uh, but I would suggest getting a Reddington combo. I do also have a budget combo listed down in the description below as well as in my links. Up next, I got a good landing net. Um, I got something short, but I wanted a mat oh, like a wide top to it in order to kind of like scoop and do what I can on my own because I fish a lot by myself. Um, so having someone else there to land the fish for me, especially if it's a larger fish, um, it's gonna be a lot easier if I've got a wider headed um, net. And wet fly fish makes a really nice net. It has the rubber netting, uh, which is a lot easier on the fish. It's a lot easier to clean too, because you wanna make sure you clean and dry your gear in between fishing. Um, it's got a nice grippy handle down here at the bottom, which is super awesome, especially when I'm like reaching around and stuff, trying to grab the net. This is the, this actually might be the bigger one of the two that they sell in this size and style, um, but I definitely like the shorter handle. It's a little bit easier to mess with on smaller rivers. Uh, big river stuff where you kind of actually have to get like a massive fish, like a salmon or a steelhead or something. This might not cut it, but it'll definitely still hold the fish. So I would suggest getting the wet fly fish. There's tons of good brands though that you can look up on Amazon, a little cheaper. This isn't something that you got to splurge on, but I would definitely take into account um, something that's going to treat the fish right, but at the same time, it's going to be easier for you to operate on the river. All right, next we're moving on to the pack. So I keep 
I keep pretty much everything that I need to fly fish in this small little like front chest uh, pocket type Orvis bag. Um, they sell these in two different styles. This one's like the lesser of the two, but it's still really, really awesome. I pack super, super heavy for the river. Um, and what I mean by that is that I'm most likely kind of carrying like a catch-all box. I'm carrying my nymphs, my dry flies, pretty much anything that I would need for any uh, scenario in the river, I keep in my pack, but I'm also able to keep it in a pack this size. Um, so that kind of speaks to the, the stuff that I've got inside of it. We'll, we'll uh, walk through that a little bit, but first we're just gonna walk through the capabilities of the bag. So it's obviously got a tippet holder just on the front here, which is awesome. Uh, I used to have like a non name brand type of uh, front pack that I would keep and it was not easy to store tippet in it. It didn't kind of do attachments with like some of the bigger brands like Sims or any of those. Um, so getting a tippet holder was really, really hard. I kind of just had to keep it in a pocket in there but it's just generally a great size. And the nice thing is I don't have to wear it with my backpack, but that's also the coolest thing about it is that it actually attaches specifically to the Orvis bug out bag. There's two sizes of these bags that you could get, but I do have a lot of stuff that needs to fit in the bag and the smallest size does pretty well. Um, but this does attach to my bug out bag and I can show you that in a few seconds. Um, but it also has like a waist pack. So I can use this as like a waist pack and wrap it around me, put my net in there as well. Um, but it also comes with like a neck strap. So you can kind of do it as a chest weighting bag as well. So yeah, what was your name? Uh, John. John, David. David, good to meet you. Dave? Yeah. Um, which is usually this, the, uh, the type of application that I use it for because I have the Orvis bug out bag as well. And it actually clips right here to the front of it so that when I'm wearing the bag, um, this just sits right here on my chest. It's easy to open up and dig into, get whatever I need to do and start fishing right up again. Sweet, moving on to the Orvis bug out bag. So you might be able to get away with maybe doing some lighter weight stuff, um, probably just a chest waiter pack or maybe even just like sticking some flies in the pocket of a vest. I have this thing because I need it for all the videos that I make. I'm carrying around like multiple tripods. I got a drone, GoPros, GoPro batteries, anything extra that I would need on the river in terms of electronics. Um, as well as some of the extra things that I want to carry in here. Bug out bag by Orvis is definitely sweet. Next we're talking through the wet weighting and dry weighting type of equipment that I use. Um, I can kind of, I'll actually start with the boots. Um, so I use the Corkers Dark Horse, which you guys have seen on my uh, social media and stuff. Um, Corkers is an incredible company. They made a sole so that you can have a swappable grip. Uh, which is awesome for when you have different uh, weighting scenarios. Like uh, here right behind me actually is like a little bit stony, but it's mainly silt and stand, uh, sand. Um, so if I were to go somewhere else, like in the Adirondacks or when we were just in Vermont, um, there was definitely a lot more freestone rivers, more slate rock bottom, a whole lot more slippery, uh, but you definitely need something f like felt for that context. Um, so you're able to switch those on, switch them off. It's super easy. All you do is pull this little tab on the back pull them down like that and you've got a brand new sole to attach to the bottom of the shoe. You can also purchase like new soles after you've worn those ones out for a while just to make the boots last longer, super sustainable and I love that company. I use right now the uh, Sims Tributaries. Um, really, they're super easy to find. Um, they have them at most um, shops like, a, uh, like Cabela's, Bass Pro, Sportsman's Warehouse, any of that type of stuff. Backcountry sells them. Um, they're an easy waiter. I will say, um, sometimes I've had some problems with like certain pressure points, like leaking a little bit more than their expensive end, um, of the waiters. So backcountry skins, they have a waterproof sock and they also have a wet weighting pant that not only keeps you hundred percent dry, but it's way more comfortable to wade in in the summer, uh, keeps you cool, but also for different contexts keeps you warm. So I could wear that underneath my waders if I am afraid of some sort of leaky waiter situation, but I'll link their website below. They're an awesome company. They're the same company that makes the hat that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, definitely check them out. If you wanna just get in the river and prioritize some of your funds towards getting a really nice rod, nice wading boots, nice waders, something like that, those are probably the things that I'd wanna get up front, spend some decent money on, um, and be able to have those for a long time. These are all the items that I use every time that I fly fish somewhere, and hopefully this was helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely helps me out a ton. Head over to some of my other socials. It's always very good fly fishing on all the other major social platforms. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.